All right, so if you're new here, we are gonna go through all the drivers alphabetically, not the odds, but the drivers. And uh, if AJ Allmendinger is racing, then he starts, but he has not. And didn't do it, uh, didn't make a run last week and will not make a run again this week. So AJ's off after starting the Daytona 500. That means we're starting once again with Christopher Bell. And it didn't take long for me to uh, disclose my Toyota, my top Toyota driver, and that is Christopher Bell. So as you can see, now you might say, well, two top fives had eight. That's nothing special. And nine to one is kind of, a, you know, it's a low number. But more importantly, the last four. All right. Three top tens, two top fives, a runner up in two poles. That's very strong. And I think it's also important to note the last four, the new car. All right. So if you look at it, uh, and, and oh, and that run, the, the top, the, those last four, the only time he wasn't in the top 10, he had a, a, an issue. That was uh, the DVP issue. And so if he doesn't have an issue with the car, uh, he seems to be really strong here in Cup. But he's also strong here in general. This is quite possibly Christopher Bell's best track. Because if you look at it, he even has um, a, he had a strong running in truck. Uh, he, I think he has three truck race uh, appearances. Not since 2017. But in his last appearance at 2017 Truck Series runner-up, he led 64 laps. That's pretty strong. He also has three top fives in four Xfinity Series races with two runner-ups and a pole. The last time he had an Xfinity Series appearance, he led 154 laps. That was back in 2019. That was another one of his runner-ups. So now he hasn't won here, but he certainly has a lot of strong top fives and runner-ups, and that's good enough for me. Uh, I, so again, if I'm looking at a really strong Toyota contender this week, Christopher Bell. That's right. Uh, you might say, well, you know, I'm, you take a look at some other uh, Joe Gibbs racers drivers, and you would think Denny Hamlin. I mean, he is eight to one. He does have a win here, et cetera, et cetera. Even Martin Truex Jr. has a much more uh, illustrious uh, uh, career. Uh, uh, numbers here at this track um, but it is Christopher Bell for me and uh, I just think it's the overall fact that whenever he races here whether it's truck Xfinity Cup he does a really good job I think he's way overdue for a win here and I think he very well could get it on Sunday next up my boy Ryan Blaney also nine to one uh, by the way Ryan was 13 to one in this race last year Nine top tens, five of those are top fives out of 15 races. So that's pretty strong. Matter of fact, he has a really strong average finish here of 12th. That's really nice. That tells you that he's a good fantasy play, an underrated fantasy play, depending on how you play your fantasy. Last year, as you can see, he had two good finishes as well. So all of that's nice, but the problem for me is the 9-1. I, th I, I, I think uh, when you take a look at some of the other drivers that have uh, run here over the years, I think that he should probably be 12 to 1, where he was last year, 12, 13 to 1. And if he was 12 to 14 to 1, I would seriously think of taking him. But I cannot take Ryan Blaney this week at 9 to 1. And we'll get into uh, some of the reasons why, which are some of the other drivers. All right, now here is our first nice that we can kind of start off each week, by the way, if AJ doesn't race. And look, even if AJ races, I don't know if I'm going to pop up uh, his numbers on the screen because it all depends on where, where we race with AJ. But it's nice that we could start Toyota, Ford, Chevy with our top three drivers in alphabetical order if AJ's not around. So Alex Bowman is next, as you can see, at 22 to 1. Now, a couple of things on Bowman. Bowman... Uh, last year in this race was 35 to 1. Interesting, too, that I was looking at the futures for this week. And let me see if I could pop up the futures, the NASCAR futures. Here are the NASCAR futures. So, where are we? Why did we do that? Futures, NASCAR futures. There they are. So, uh, Larson, you see there, Byron Hamlin. All right, now, he, the, the, 
the driver that had the biggest leap from first week to second week is this 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 boy right here, Alex Bowman. Last week, Bowman was thirty-five to one. That is a big jump from thirty-five to one to twenty to one, considering he didn't do anything. Uh, the the other driver who actually made a jump was Eric Jones. He was one hundred and thirty to one last week. He's now eighty to one. This I think is just a correction because he should never have been one hundred thirty to one with as well as Eric Jones has looked compared to these other drivers in this area. Jones definitely should have been eighty to one to start the season. So I think that was more of a correction. At Bowman that was surprising. I, now look, I think Bowman probably should have started the season about 25, 28 to one. So maybe there is a little correction in there, but he's getting some play. I think there a little bit of it is play. I think there's some uh, some money coming in on Alex Bowman. So and look, there's money coming on potentially on him this week. Uh, again, difference from thirty five last year to twenty two to one. And if you take a look, if if you look at Bowman, he's got the win, and he, he, overall three tough fives and a win in thirteen. But the three top fives in the win, as you can see, have come in his last six races. So that is, uh, that's good. He's got the Chevy. By the way, last year, he had a third place finish. And in the other race, he was not able to finish. He was involved in a wreck. Um, he also has a good history at Kansas. Eight top tens, three top fives, and 16 races over at Kansas. So Bowman is a good uh, long shot play, and I definitely have him uh, as part of my picks this week. I do not have Chase Briscoe. we got to get Chase Briscoe going. And so I think this is a really important race for Briscoe. And you can see that he's got the two Xfinity Series wins, and that's why I think this is an important week. Only one top five out of six. Uh, it wasn't last year. As you can see, he did not race well here last year. And it was a pretty bad year, as you can recall, for Chase Briscoe. I, I know he didn't uh, forget. But this has actually uh, been Briscoe's best Xfinity track. And he's got the two wins. Uh, he swept the 2020 season in the Xfinity Series, leading a combined 253 laps. So, and I, and I think that, I don't know if that, I think it might have been his last appearance at Las Vegas in Xfinity Series. I, I'm, 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 I think that's the case. But anyway, the fact is, Briscoe has enjoyed uh, some uh, some positive results at this track. He does have one top five here in the Cup. This is just an important race for Briscoe to get. If he can get in the top 10, that's a huge step for him moving forward because, again, he's just like Suarez winning last week and talking about confidence, this is a kid that needs confidence really fast. Chris Busher, 22 to 1. I'm not going to go with Busher this week. As you can see, it's not been pretty. Just the one top 10 overall. Last year, it didn't have a top 10, even though it was his best year on the Cup Series. Kyle Bush. Kyle, uh, we, we're doing our futures. I, I don't have our futures report ready yet because we just kind of started. And. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll wait for Eric to give some because Eric has not made his. Yet. Well, I don't know how long Eric's going to wait to take a pick because he could take a futures pick whenever he wants. Um, I already have three wagers in the futures made. Two of them are for Kyle Bush, so I've got two hundred dollars already on Bush out of my allotted thousand dollars I could spend this year, and I put a hundred dollars on Chastain to start the season. So Kyle Bush still fourteen to one, and I'm well. I was. A little bit surprised that that number did not drop, and so because of that, I went ahead and put another hundred bucks in Kyle Busch this week to win the championship. So I have him uh, for twenty eight hundred dollars now out of the two hundred dollars I've invested. And if you take a look here, twelve to one, that's solid odds. Twelve top fives. That you're talking fifty percent, nearly fifty percent of the time he's at Las Vegas, he's in the top five. Very impressive. He does have a win. That was in 2009, so it was a little bit ago. But look at him recently. Sixth or better in his last seven, including he's been third four times during that stretch. One of those was last year. Now, he hasn't led a lap, though, in his last three races at Vegas. That does concern me just a little bit. But I love the start he's off to. I don't care it's in a drafting uh, environment. Um, look, I, I, I picked him before the 500 started. 
as far as my futures because and I, he's on my fantasy team for the same exact reason. I think he's going to have a big year. So I really do believe Kyle Busch uh, is going to have a great chance to get to the Final Four this year and maybe even win a championship, and he's off to a really good start. By the way, he has four uh, truck wins, including last year at Las Vegas, and we all know Las Vegas is the hometown track for the Bush brothers. Uh, basically, we're down to Kyle now. But, yeah, I think Kyle dialed in, especially this week, and I think he's a really good play. He's one of my top picks for Las Vegas. Next up is William Byron. Now, Byron, not surprisingly, unable to duplicate uh, his success slash luck in Daytona in a track that he was actually... See, that's interesting. If you would have said, well, William Byron won one of the first two races this season, you would have just said it's definitely Atlanta. Not the case, because William Byron was not even a, a, a top contender last week. So, you know, you put your notes in so you can kind of look at them later on in the year for the second race, and my notes did not involve William Byron. I got about eight drivers that I circled. Byron was not one of them, and that's kind of surprising for Atlanta. But that's what happens when you win your first Daytona 500. Now, he's 8-1 to one this week. He's a defending champ of the race, and as you can see, he's been very solid here, including lately. He's got, he's got the win last March. He's the defending champ. He's been solid at Kansas. Uh, he does also. Oh, and, and in the win last year, last March, he led 176 laps. He's in a Chevy and a couple other things. He was 5-1 to one to win this race last year. So you're getting almost double now. And Larson's 4-1. to one, So you're getting double. And I'm sorry, as much as I think Larson is uh, the favorite, he should be. And he is quite possibly going to be very strong again on Sunday. I don't see double. I just don't. And because of that, I'm going to take a, a different strategy this week uh, with my selections. And I am taking William Byron in my picks. Next up is Ross Chastain at 15 to 1. And Ross was 22 to 1 in this race last year. Uh, overall, he's been pretty good here lately. In his last four, as you can see, th all, th all of those top fives he has in his career have been lately. And that's not a surprise because we all know pre-next uh, gen, Ross Chastain just was a completely different driver. So the last four attempts here at Las Vegas, three of those are top fives. They're all in the top 12. He has a runner-up. Um, he also has an Xfinity Series win. Matter of fact, it was in 2018 where he led 180 laps. He dominated that race in the Xfinity Series. And in his last four races at Kansas, three of those are in the top 10. They're all in the top 15. So you've combined Kansas and Las Vegas. Ross Chastain has been solid. Okay. And I definitely considered him, but I just couldn't fit him this week. And there's another driver at 15 to 1 that I did take. So it was one of those, like, do I take this guy or this guy? And I and, and this is obviously, if, uh, there's really, I think, in, in the 15 to 20 to 1 range, there are, let's see if I could take a look. Actually, yeah, you have, oh, you know what? Chastain's numbers actually just went up. No, wait, am I looking at the, no, I'm looking at the uh, uh, futures, the uh, championship. Uh, numbers let me get to the race numbers yeah so if we're talking about the 15 to 1 well actually i could well, say from elliot at 14 to 1 to mm, wallace at 19 to 1 that those five drivers i took three of them uh four of them i think are worth taking the only one i don't think well i'll i'll, I'll indicate that in a, in a minute or two i'll let you know who but Chastain definitely was somebody that I think that you should consider this week. I just couldn't fit him in. and uh, But he's a good play. I think he's a decent play. Austin Sindrick is next. And Austin Sindrick, big number as well. He should be at this point in his uh, career, the way the season has gone. Really, the last couple of seasons, he's under a lot of pressure. And I do like the way that he has started the season. He's on my fantasy team for a reason as well. Uh, I do have some good feelings about Cindric this year. I think he's too talented of a driver for him to not figure it out. 
and I'm expecting him to figure it out this year. That's why he's one of my long shot plays at 100 to 1. If you take a look at his career numbers here, nothing, nothing fan fancy. Only just one top 10, and I get that. Um, but matter of fact, did I, I don't, I don't think I, I don't know if I looked at him for, uh, for the Xfinity series. So let me just see. Uh, quickly where I mean I, I think I looked at him but it's possible I might not have so let me see Austin Cindric Xfinity series let's see this is the cup so let me move on over to his numbers in the Xfinity series and um, but I do like the way that he started the season and that's the most important thing all right in the Xfinity Series, he has eight appearances. He has finished, matter of fact, it's a pretty good run for him. In his last four appearances back in 2020 and 2021, the last two years he raced in the Xfinity Series, all of them were in, all the results were in the top six with a runner up. And he led a minimum of 10 laps in all four of those races. So that's good. I'm glad I looked at that. Uh, because I don't recall looking at that uh, in, in my pre-research, and I should have. But Cindric does have that six, which was in this race last year. So I like the start. I like the fact that he's been solid here at this track. And at 100-1, to 1, he's definitely a solid long shot play. Austin Dillon. You know, Austin Dillon is also on my fantasy team. But he's somebody that has got a short leash. Uh, I expected him to get off to a better start with the drafting races, and we have just not seen it. And the thing is, is Austin Dillon is one of those drivers that can just win a race. You know, he's one of those drivers that can just win a race, and, and that's what you're looking for with your, with your fantasy teams. When you have those drivers at the end, who do you think can win you a race? And so Austin Dillon's a guy you have to keep in mind. But I will say this, and that is that um, unless you're talking about, I'll throw a buck on him at 100 to one. That's that's different. But I can't seriously invest in certain drivers who I don't really have any sort of confidence they are going to win a race. And to tell you the truth, uh, to, just the start that he's had, that's what I'm a little bit worried about. And if you don't really think your driver is going to win a race, then why invest the money even if it's just a few bucks? Because we are talking what 30 some odd, almost 40 races. So let's just multiply. Let's just round it out to 30. So let's say I invest uh, between a buck and five dollars in thirty races. You're talking to close to hundred bucks a season that I'm putting on Austin Dillon. Now I even got to win a race to get that money back. But even that, let's say he does that. Let's say he wins a race and I get my money back. Well, why did I have to spend all that? I could have used that money somewhere else and actually tried to make money, not get my money back. So uh, that's what I'm a little bit concerned with. Because I, th you know, I think there were a lot of people that were like, all right, Kyle Busch got a new teammate. Let's see how this works. It's just not working. It did not work last year. And it's, it's off to a bad start this year. So I don't know what's going on there with Austin Dillon. It's just, you know what? Some drivers are just who they are. And I think that's what we're getting now with Austin Dillon. He is what he is. And I just don't think Austin Dillon has another gear. And that's what I'm a little bit disappointed with so far this season. But... Um, and, and look, we're not going to find out this week because, as you can see, he, he doesn't really have much of a history at, uh, at this racetrack. Chase Elliott is that other driver in that 14 to 19 to 1 range I'm talking about. And he is the one driver that I just would not even think of taking because he doesn't have a great history here, as you can see. Last year, did nothing. Um, you know, he hasn't let a lap in his last three appearances in Las Vegas. He has one win at Kansas. That's about it. So the combined one win at a whatever, close to 30 races from those two tracks is not all that great, especially at 14 to 1. Ty Gibbs. Now, uh, Ty Gibbs uh, is going to have to is going to have to make the move from successful Xfinity to successful Cup, just like say Chase Briscoe. Um, and maybe even a few other guys. But fact is, we know Gibbs has got the talent to do it. And I expect him to have a good week this week. But Because, look, he does have the success of the Xfinity Series to tell you that he can do things on this track. He's got the win. And, and that, by the way, the fourth and the first came in 2022, both of those races. Um, 
But uh, and he, and you are getting twenty eight to one. The thing is, with with a player like Gibbs, if he wins a race, okay, his first Cup race, his odds are going to drop. I think tremendously. I think he goes from a weekly twenty five to thirty to one driver to a fifteen to one driver, fourteen, maybe even twelve, just with a win. I'm not talking about a fluky win. I'm talking about a good win. He's looking good. Maybe even had a few top fives before the win. He he, he is going to get to that point. Well, he will be there. At, you know, I don't know when that's going to be, but that, we'll, we'll get to there. Um, but my point is, is that what you want to see is you want to take him when his odds are 28 to 1, 25 to 1. You know, you, what you don't want to see is where you've lost the week to take them, and now all of a sudden you're never getting those really cool long shot odds again because I, because I think when he gets to the point Ty Gibbs and he wins that race and he has that run, I don't think you're ever going to see Ty Gibbs at 28-1 to again, at least not on you know a regular racetrack kind of deal. But bottom line, this is not the week in my mind to take him. He can, again, I think he can get into the top 10 this week to start to make that run on the cup series side at this racetrack but i'm not willing to gamble on it at 28 to 1 i'd rather do it i i, I want some better numbers than 28 to 1. Well, let's move on down to denny hamlin and here's the other 8 to 1 driver so my strategy was this i have kyle larson at 4 to 1 i have hamlin and byron at 8 to 1. those three drivers are are should be separated from the rest of the field even byron and blaney at 9 to 1 even though there's only by a point they're the they're the favorites so what i'm doing is is i'm going all right with our hundred dollars to spend on each week with these picks i'm going to take byron and hamlin and leave larson out so i've got two drivers for one and, and i've got the double money with both of them so that's going to be my strategy now look you could just go ahead and take larson byron and hamlin and call it a week and say those are my three guys but uh and again, if we're talking my hundred dollar way of doing things, but really, even if you think of doing that, I don't know. Let's just let's just say let's just say you put. Let me see. Let's say you put twenty five dollars on Kyle Larson at four to one. That's a hundred bucks. I don't even have to type that in. Oh, I don't have to type it in. It's easy. So you got a hundred bucks. Okay. Now you put twenty five dollars on Hamlin and Byron. It's two hundred bucks. So. I think so. Even if you're thinking about that strategy, it's not bad. You can go, or or you could do is go Larson fifty, and then Hamlin Byron twenty five. There's your hundred. Now, if any of them win, it's two hundred bucks. So you're making a hundred dollars. Okay, so you could look at it that way too. Uh, now, the reason I wouldn't do that this week is because my two top picks are not. In that group actually i shouldn't say that because when we get to my top picks this week you're probably gonna go well how how is it how are you doing that so i might confuse you a little bit of why i'm doing um you know i'm doing my top picks compared to my picks in my uh with uh, cj but i'll have a reason for it but anyway fact is is that um just to tell you how i'm personally wait spending my money this week i am not wagering on kyle larson this week okay i am i am uh, a matter of fact i'm not even wagering on denny hamlin and william byron at this point so now we'll see whether or not i change my mind and um as you can see qualifying is going to matter an awful lot here so that's all that's another thing even though i don't see kyle larson's numbers dropping considerably from four to one if he's on the pole i can't really see that but stranger things have happened people put a lot of money on kyle larson if he is on the pole and even if he's four to one, I could I could see that drop into two to one, and at that point, just forget it. No way. But uh, you you have a much bigger chance of Denny Hamlin and William Byron seeing their numbers cut in half if they're on the pole. I can definitely see those drivers down to four to one if one of them is on the pole. So if you like Hamlin or Byron, take him before qualifying. But look at Hamlin. Fifty uh, percent of the time he's in the top ten. Six of those are top fives. Uh, and, and, and just recently, in his last seven, he's got six top 12s, four of those top fives. 
He has his lone win in that run. I told you the Toyota one recently. This was Denny Hamlin in 2021. He's led 392 career laps at Las Vegas. He's led at least five laps in his last seven. And, and, and most of those are significant, that he has led laps, not just a fluky five-lap lead, that kind of thing. He's also been very good at Kansas. 13 top fives and four wins at Kansas. The last five visits to Kansas for Denny Hamlin, second, first, second, fourth, and fifth. That is dominant over at Kansas. Um, yeah, you know what? That is really dominant. Wow, he's going to be uh, tough to beat there. Uh, so overall, uh, that's why I have Hamlin on my picks this week with Byron. I only put money on both of them to uh, get back to even. So as far as my picks. Okay, because like I said, I'm not going to, at this point in time, put any money in, on my own account on any of these three drivers because I like Kyle Busch and Christopher Bell. Now, if I didn't like Kyle Busch and Christopher Bell, then I would start thinking about the the formula that I just went over with you. I think I don't think it's a bad formula, doing it sort of like what I said. You know, if you want to invest a hundred bucks or someone something down the line, they could do in that. All right, next up, let's move on over to I, you know we could pop up Eric Jones. I think he's worth popping up every week at this point. He's been okay here over his career. Nothing great, not so good last year. He's never led a lap at this racetrack. I don't think this is the week to consider Eric Jones. Brad Keselowski. This is the week to take Brad Keselowski, and I am going to take Keselowski. I have him in my picks. He's getting a really nice number at 18 to 1. He's one of those drivers I mentioned within that five driver category that I think, you know, you have to take a few of them. And I went the Kislowski route. Um, and I also went with a, a couple other drivers, which we'll get into. But Kislowski, nine top fives out of 21. He's got, and, and, and look at that, out of those top fives, five of those nine are either runner ups or wins. Last year, when he had a really good year, the rebound year, he had a top five. He's also uh, pretty good at Kansas over his career. So, yeah, I think uh, Kozlowski overdue for a win. Hasn't had one in a while. 18-1, to 1, good number. Definitely, I would take Brad Kozlowski this week. And so you're getting good numbers with some of these other drivers because Kyle Larson's 4-1. to 1. And uh, that's and and you're getting what five drivers in the ten to one. You got Blaney and Bell along with Hamlin and Byron. So because of that, uh, you're getting a couple of breaks on the odds with a few drivers. Kozlowski is one of them. And there's a couple other guys we're gonna get into like Truex also, who's got a low number that I think is a little bit too low. I think Truex and Kozlowski you can compare both of them very evenly. And yet I'm getting eighteen to one with Kozlowski as opposed to ten to one with Truex. That's definitely the reason that I decided to go with Kozlowski over Truex. Now let's talk about Larson. All right, so Kyle Larson, he's going to be the boy this week. Everybody's going to talk about Kyle Larson, and deservedly so. Uh, nearly 50% of the time he's in the top five with the two wins. And just in his last 12, 10 of those top 10s, over 50% top five. And that includes four runner-ups and two wins. That is an incredible run for Kyle Larson at this track. Last year alone, he finished first and second and led a combined 196 laps. On top of that, in his last six races at Las Vegas, he's led 421 laps in his last six overall, averages out to 70 a race. And he's very good at Kansas. 636 laps led at Kansas in his last 10 races there with six top fives, two runner-ups, and a win. That's why I said if if you don't want to go with a Kyle Busch or a Truex or a Bell or a Blaney, you know, those guys, then this was not a bad week in a strategy to just, you know, go with Larson, Hamlin, Byron kind of trifecta, but... Um, I got no problem, even if you want to just, hey, if you have 100 bucks, do 100 bucks on Kyle Larson this week. This is one of those weeks that uh, you, I give you permission uh, to go down that route, even though you know anything can happen. And let's keep this in mind, too. This is a perfect, you can, look, you can say everything you want about the, the laps led, uh, the, the incredible percentages inside the top five and the top ten and all that kind of stuff. But, and let me see, let me get my little calculator out. But, what is that, 15 races? 
is that what it is? Let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah. If you divide two wins into 15 races, that means that Kyle Larson has won at Las Vegas 13% of the time. Okay? 13% of the time. So when you invest heavily, because you have to invest heavily, this is not about saying, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna invest hundred bucks, but it's four hundred dollars. That that's a lot of money. I can still make a lot of money. I can make four hundred bucks this week. I got Carl Larson, he's dominant here. Look at all his dominant numbers. I can make four hundred bucks, put a hundred bucks on him. He, as dominant as he's been, thirteen percent. That's the percentage. I mean, seriously, that's hey, what is that close to ten percent? Come on, thirteen percent? That's that's supposed to be a number that I want to like risk a hundred bucks on or more. So again, you can do it. I think it's a halfway de decent strategy, especially if you just want to go that route. Uh, I will only recommend that a handful of times a year. But you have to know the percentages, and the percentages tell you that he is only one at Las Vegas thirteen percent of the time. Okay, next up. Let's go with the next uh, driver we have that we are taking this week that we just mentioned in that f handful of driver group, and that's Joey Logano. So he's one of them. Just like Chastain, both 15 to 1, but I went with Logano over Chastain. I like the way that Logano has driven so far this year, even though, you know, it's not like it looks like he's off to a great start, but he's been solid at both tracks. 12 top 10s out of 21, so he's over 50% in the top tens seven of those top fives he's won three times here now you look at last year and that's not all that great but last year man he was 30 to one last year somebody has to explain to me why joey logano was 30 to one last year I, I don't know whether or not i i have the wrong number i double checked it where i was looking and i'm like really why would he be 30 to one i don't know um I'm, maybe you know Eric would have a good uh, explanation if he was here, but he's not down to a respectable fifteen to one. So this is definitely where he should be. But I also think you're getting decent odds with fifteen to one because he could easily be a ten to one, twelve to one. But you're getting fifteen to one, and you know why you're getting fifteen and not getting ten to one and twelve to one because he's driving a Ford. That's all it is. Uh, his career, as you can see, has been strong. He's been good at Kansas. He, combining the two tracks, he has six wins. Three wins here, three wins Kansas. It's a good track for Logano, and the odds are very good. You are getting a bargain here with Joey Logano. Now, we're going to get past McDowell, Nemechek, and Priest, and go with Tyler Reddick. Now, here's a driver whose odds are definitely not where they should be. I, I don't know why Joey Logano is getting 15 to 1 and Tyler Reddick is getting 10 to 1. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, and it's not like Reddick is even driving a Chevy. But hey, look, they got the manufacturer price of plus 170 to plus 120 Chevy. So they believe heavily that it's Toyota or Chevy. Forget the Fords. No. I mean, Tyler Reddick has been okay here. 50% of the time he's in the top 10. Four in the last five appearances. But do you notice something? that you don't see there, and I'm not talking about wins, I'm talking about top fives. Tyler Reddick has never had a top five in the Cup Series at Las Vegas, and he's 10 to one. He didn't have one last year either, as you can see. Uh, overall, if you look at Reddick at Kansas, that could be a reason that they feel good about him here, because he won the race in September at Kansas. He also has an Xfinity Series win in 2019 here at Las Vegas. Look, I think Reddick is a, a, a decent uh, driver here, um, at, you know, especially at this type of track, uh, but I definitely do not think he should be 10 to 1. He should be 15 to 1, uh, no higher than 14 to 1. 10 to 1, I, I'm sorry, but look, yeah, he won at Kansas last year, but you know what? He also raced at Las Vegas last year, this track, and he did not win, and he did not have a top five. Sometimes you get carried away with the track similarities. It's a handicapping tool. You use it as one of your tools. I think it's funny sometimes when you can get caught up either in golf or NASCAR when you're handicapping things, and you go, or even it could be in any sport, and you go, 
well, yeah, but this particular driver, he is good at these tracks. Yeah, but he's not really that good here. So even though these tracks are really, on average, very similar to this track, what is he here? That's that's the most important part, is what is he here? And sometimes you even get situations where um, somebody will try to trash a driver and say, yeah, but look, he's not very good at, at, uh, at, at these tracks, um, and because he's not very good at these tracks, uh, I just don't know. You know, this isn't usually the type. He's not really good at these uh, types of tracks. And it's, yeah, but he's actually good here. You know, it's like sometimes you get into this, well, what do I get? Oh, it's like being good at Kansas, like really good at Kansas. And yet not, sort of like Reddick, this is the perfect example. And then you, and then you go, yeah, but nah, I, I just, uh, yeah, I, I just... I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I, I think that if he's going to be if he's going to be really good at these other tracks, then he should be good here. And that just doesn't always translate. I'm sorry, it just doesn't. And I think, like I said, if you're getting 14 or 15 to one, that's fine. But at 10 to one, you know, I, I just think you're overanalyzing Tyler Reddick this week. Okay. Next up, let's skip Stenhouse, and uh, we could talk Suarez. Why not? He got the big win last week, but he doesn't have a good history here. Uh, he's raced here, as you can see, 13 times, just a couple of top 10s. Not much last year, but um, he's coming off a win, and as I said at the outset, this is going to be important. As quickly as he can, you got to forget about it, especially since this is, a, this is a regular track. This is a you know typical track. The most typical on the Cup Series. These are the types of races uh, that are going to uh, have a lot to do with what kind of a season you have. And we'll find out. And look, he didn't win the Daytona 500. All right. So just forget about it and move on. And let's see if you can get this. Uh, I mean, look, Chastain had some decent numbers here, too. So this team itself has to continue to just uh, look like they have turned the corner. Because they had a very strong 2022. Last year, not so much, even though Chastain still had uh, a good year, but not the year they had the year before. So both of them have to keep moving along because Daniel, Daniel Suarez is 65 to 1. That's a big number. I mean, if you want to be considered uh, you know, a, a decent contender in this sport, I mean, 65 to 1, I mean, you're talking about, you're, 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 look how close you are to 80 and 100 to 1. I mean, that, that's like Austin Dillon territory. Martin Truex Jr. We got two of them left in Truex. Look, I like Truex here, but I don't... I, I Look, I don't like the odds at all, and I also don't like the fact that recently he hasn't been very good here, including, of course, the last two years. So look at those big numbers. 15 top 10, 7 top 5s. He's got some wins. Look at him recently... And, and this is th these are positives. 14 top 12s, 7 top 5s, runner-up 2 wins. And you might be saying, I'm sure you, you might, well, didn't you just say recently he wasn't doing well? Yeah, in a way, because what I'm really referring to are leading laps. So here you have a driver that might be really good in fantasy. Hey, not, unless, of course, you need points for leading laps. But... Is he going to finish in the top 10? You know what? Martin Truex probably will. This is the way he's done uh, at this track. You can pretty much lock it up. Unless something freaky happens, book him with a top 10. But if we want to win a race, in his last eight races, he's only led 21 laps at Las Vegas. He led 313 in his career. So that means he led nearly 300 laps in the first 16 races at Las Vegas, which is what? So let's go, let's say, so we'll go uh, 16 divided by 30. So he's he let over 50 laps a race on average in his first 16 races at Las Vegas, okay? 50. And then in the last eight races, he has led Two laps, 2.6 laps. Big difference. 
And, and he is very good at Kansas, too. Okay, now, if I'm, and, and look, I don't think the odds are wrong. They should be 10 to 1. He has a great history here. But he was 7 to 1 last year. So he's 10 to 1 this year. And I think that's, that's the way it should be. But he's at a low number. And if I'm looking, anytime you get these, you talk about this in horse racing, especially more than anything, you know, you, you try to eliminate and find warts with the top drivers, the top horses, because you want to look for bargains automatically. So when you when you get into handicapping any event, the first thing you want to try and do is, is see if you, like, do I have a Kyle Larson here? Okay, I do. Oh, well, all right. Does he have warts? No. He really doesn't. Kyle Larson doesn't have any warts. The only warts I can give you with Kyle Larson was when I said he's only uh, won 13% of the time. That's the wart. But Martin Truex Jr. has warts, as I just mentioned. And so that's why it's a little easier for me to pass on Truex at 10 to 1 and definitely say I'm going to put more money on guys that are around him. Byron, Hamlin, Bell, Bush. But a couple of guys have to be knocked off the list. Truex gives me good reason to knock him off the list. And we round out with Bubba Wallace. So Bubba Wallace, 19 to 1. Uh, odds aren't too bad for Bubba uh, because you look at two top 10s out of 12 and you're probably going, well, that's not, that, you know, why is he 19 to 1? Shouldn't he be like 25 to 1, 30 to 1? But I like Bubba uh, as a long shot. He's my top long shot play. Matter of fact, I'm going to have two long shots because as you heard when my, the clip came up earlier, um, and I had like, it was, it was sort of like I had two long shots because Suarez was 30 to 1 last week and Haley, I think, went down to 60 to 1 on race day. Uh, but he was around 100 to 1 when we were doing the show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have like a long shot, which this still is, you know, the, the 18 to 1s, the 25 to 1s, those are long shots. But I'm also going to throw in an 80, 100 to 1 long shot. So, which is kind of what I did last week, Suarez and Haley. So Wallace is going to be my main long shot at 19 to 1. And here's why. Um, I, I, you got to look inside to see, outside the stats, of why I think Walt Wallace is a good play this week. Uh, he's had one. He's had, actually, let me just make sure. He's had one top five. I'm surprised I didn't put that top five in there. So I just want to double check because he had the two top tens. So let me just double check for you uh, while I'm doing this. So let's see. So, because he was fourth, in, I think it was this race last year. It was in one of the two races last year when he was fourth. So let's see. Uh, 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 Bubba Wallace. Uh, where is he? There he is. So Bubba Wallace had, yeah, one top five, two top tens. So, um, so he, he had two top tens overall, but the best result was his fourth place finish. And the fourth place finish uh, came in this race last year. Now, um, that's one sign. The other, he led 29 laps in October of 2022. So let's just take a look at his last three races. He got the four races with the new car. So let's take a look at the last three races with the new car for Bubba at this track. 29 laps he led in October 2022. And he crashed in that race. Not, I don't recall what happened, but... So he had um, uh, a race that didn't end well, and yet he obviously had a fast car that day. He followed that up with uh, a fourth place finish in this race last year, and then a, a pretty decent top 15 last year. Um, what was that? Uh, October? I forget. So in his last three races, I don't care about before that, and that's what is also important to note is that you're always going to reference the last four races since or whatever, as long as there's two per year. You're always going to look at, but look, you're going to look at, obviously the career is important, no doubt. You don't wipe out the career no matter what the deal is. But when you're talking about the new car, that is a huge difference with the driver and overall when you're taking a look at trends and so forth. So Bubba's definitely somebody that fits that category. He's been a completely different driver since the since the car change and even last year i mean when you race for michael jordan uh and michael jordan believes in you and feels that you have what it takes there's a lot that goes into that um now 
Let's also take a look at Bubba Wallace. Last three races at Kansas, uh, he had uh, one bad race, which is similar to having a wreck. So we'll throw that out. But the other two races, fourth and first. So Bubba Wallace in his last six races at both of these tracks, you've had one bad, and even on one of the bad, he led laps and had a strong car that day. And he's had three top fives, including a win. That is why I think Bubba Wallace is a really good long shot play this week. And I also uh, think that he is somebody that if he can get a win early and show some consistency. Let's let's just throw out a win. Let's say he just shows consistency. Let's say he goes through a run of four races in a row at different tracks, and they're in the top 10. They're in the top 12. He's leading laps. That's also important. Not a lot. But just you know, 20 laps here, 10 laps there, 15, 50 laps there. And over a couple of months, he has in eight races, he has uh, six top 10s and two or three top fives. Still no wins, but that's that, that type of run. He does that, and well, let's say the odds come down to 40 to 1 to win the championship right now. He comes, let's say the odds drop. They won't drop that much without a win, but maybe they come down to 30 to 1, 35 to 1. I would jump on him. He has to, that's the next step for Bubba, must show consistency. And I think that could happen, but until it happens, um, uh, I just have to, I, I, I can't really go all in on him to win a championship and, and believe that he's got what it takes to be a championship driver right now. But what I do believe he has what it takes is to be a better driver this year. He's been a better driver the last two years, and I think he'd even be a better driver this year. And so I'm going to try to take advantage of that with the 19 to one. Okay. So there's uh, Bubba and there's our drivers. Now uh, there are a few other driver notes I want to mention. So let's see uh, Josh Berry. Okay. Josh Berry. And I do have money on Josh Berry this week. I got a buck on Josh Berry. Josh Berry, and he's never raced a cup at Las Vegas, but in six Xfinity Series races, nobody has been better than Josh Berry. Four top fives and two wins with an average finish of 5.0. That is legitimately awesome. So when I have a driver that has been that good, in Xfinity Series, I don't think he's going to win. Okay? I'm not saying that. But at 150 to 1, I am willing to invest a dollar. And that's what I'm doing this week with Josh Berry. So let's pop up the picks. Where are the picks? Here are the picks. All right. So. There you see CJ. I mean, CJ is definitely has got a different strategy than I do, which is why I'm glad I've got CJ's top picks uh, each week now. So you see CJ is going with Larson and Hamlin, but he's not taking Byron. So that's interesting. So he's, he's going to eliminate one of them. He's going to take two out of the three and go with Larson and Hamlin. He does have Bell. Does not have, uh, he does have Kyle Busch. He does have Truex. So uh, let's see. So who is so taking So besides Byron... He is not going with Reddick as far as the top picks. He's also not going with Chase Elliott. I mean, his longest shot, and he doesn't take a lot of long shots, CJ. So his longest shot is Logano at 15 to 1. As you can see, so my strategy is, as I said, I'm taking Byron and Hamlin, taking those two over Hamlin, so I'm getting two for the price of one. Bell and Bush are my top plays. So my top three. Now, here's where, as I said, uh, earlier, you're probably going to get confused by this, but hear me out. My top three this week, my second uh, pick this week, my number two is going to be Kyle Bush. My number three is Christopher Bell. My long shot is Wallace, and my super long shot is Sindrick. My top pick is Kyle Larson. All right? So it's sort of like if I was playing one and done this week, you know, if you know the one and done contest in football and in golf, uh, it can be completely, your one and done pick can be completely different to how you pick and invest money in each week. And and the reason is, is because you're saying to yourself, okay, I can only use this driver once this year. So where am I going to use them? All right. This would be a race that I would 
definitely consider using Larson for the one and only time this year. There's not many other races that I would do this. I'm not saying he's not good at other tracks, but this is pretty much one of, if not the, best track for Kyle Larson. 